Guys, it's your average soundtrack enjoyer, Stephen Lynn, back with another lesson. This one is for main theme from Soundtrack from Imaginary Western. It's the opening track. I've got my nylon string guitar because we are going for the sort of Spanish-Italian vibe here. You can play this on a steel string, but it's probably going to sound a little bit more folky instead. Not really the vibe we're going for. So if you have a nylon string, you're going to grab that one. We're in standard tuning. And the song is in E minor. It's got basically three sections, what I call a verse, a chorus, and the bridge. And this, the chord progression is almost exactly the same throughout the entire track with just one change in the bridge. The bridge and the verses are finger style. And then the chorus is strummed. So I am going to grab a plectrum to play that, but it is not strictly necessary to do so. The chord progression is the same. It's just going to be E minor to A minor, repeat that, and then there's a G, A major, C major, and D, and that's the entire song. Those are all the chords used, but the way that I play them is going to differ slightly in different sections, so we'll go over that. But before we do so, we'll discuss the uh, finger picking pattern because it's exactly the same throughout the verses. Every chord plays the exact same finger style pattern, so I'm not going to discuss it as we go through those chords. I'm just going to go over it here now on the opening E minor chord, which I am playing by just fretting the second fret of the D string, which is the note E. I'm not playing anything on the low E or the A string in the verse. So there's no need to play the full E minor chord, probably the way that you've learned it. And it's actually, it's going to be a lot easier if you just fret that E note with your middle finger, because it's going to make the change to the E minor very, very simple. So we're starting with this E minor chord. I'm going to be using three fingers for the finger, finger style pattern, thumb, index, middle. If you watched my last video about Homestead, it's the same thing. The thumb is always going to play the D string. The index fingers are either going to be on the G and the B string, the index on the G with the middle on the B, or the index on the B with the middle on the E. And the pattern is exactly the same, but I'm just moving those two fingers from either the B and the G strings up to the B and the E and then back. So the pattern is just going to be thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index. And then so the second time I play the middle and the index, I'm just moving them up to the B and the E. And that repeats, uh, that's basically the entire pattern. Thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index. And then on the last one, I just don't move the fingers up to the higher strings. I keep them on the G and the B string and play that one twice. So I'll go over it slowly so you can play along. Again, it's thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index. That's the whole pattern, then we'll change chords. And each chord has the exact same pattern, as I said, on the same strings in the same order. So the only thing you have to worry about after you get that pattern down is moving the chords with the left hand. I'll go over it one more time. I'll play it slowly, then I'll play it up to speed. Playing it the way I do, uh, I think, makes it easy to, to build up speed. I could actually play this much quicker than I did. 
um, versus using the regular um, classical guitar or Spanish guitar where you use all the fingers on the right hand, um, alternating with just these three, thumb, index, middle, thumb, index, middle, makes it flow a lot easier. It has a kind of rolling feeling to it. It just kind of rolls along under the fingers. For me, that's a lot easier. Um, you can obviously play that with all your fingers. could use the ring finger on the high E the whole time and not have to worry about moving your index and middle finger back and forth between the strings, but like I said, I find this much easier uh, to play it this way. So that's the picking pattern, thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index, over and over again. I'm going to start with the E minor chord, play through that whole pattern, and then we'll switch to the A minor. And for the A minor, I'm just playing a totally normal A minor chord that everybody knows in the open position here. But since I have my middle finger down on that uh, E already, playing the E minor that way, rather than a full E minor chord like that, makes the change super easy. We'll just play through that pattern with the, the A minor. the G again since I'm not playing anything on the low E string or the A string there's no point in putting my hand on that full G chord the only note I need to fret is the third fret of the high E string which is the high G there and then the D string the G string and the B string will be open and everything's exactly the same the, the picking pattern is exactly the same as before to the A chord and that's where things might get tricky because the way I'm playing it I'm not in this section just going to play a regular A open chord like that where you have the second fret on the D, G, and B strings. I'm going to bar all of that with my index finger and then the pinky is going to reach up to the fifth fret of the high E string. So that can be a difficult stretch but no, it's a pretty common way that you hear people play A chords, especially in like rock. You know, you got the Pete Townsend thing where he'll actually fret. He'll bar with his pinky on the B and the E string at the fifth fret. But in this case, I'm only playing the pinky on the high E string here at the fifth fret, which is a high A, barring with my index finger, and the picking pattern is exactly the same. Now you may have noticed when I switched from that G to the A, I didn't actually put that uh, pinky down right away because you don't have to play it for the first, you know, I think it's like the fourth note, fifth note of the pattern or whatever. Uh, so you don't actually have to switch straight from this to that instantly. You can bar first and then put the pinky down. Really useful skill to develop as a guitar player when you're switching between chords. You don't have to play the full chord instantly if you're not strumming all the notes at the same time. If I don't need to play that uh, high A note right away, I don't have to put that finger down right away either. comes across in the camera but I think you can see it and the point should be pretty obvious so we have the A 
then we're going to switch to a C with the exact same picking pattern, obviously. Since I'm not playing anything on the A string, I don't need to play a full C bar chord like this because I'm not using that note. So I can just play it like this and just leave off the A completely. So it would just be the top four strings of a regular C open chord. And that change from the A to the C is quite challenging. And then we have a D chord, regular old D open chord, perfectly normal. So again, the chord progression, E minor, A minor, E minor, A minor, G, A major, C, and D. So I'll uh, run through the whole chord progression finger style slowly here for you. some ways those chord progressions, uh, those chord changes are a little bit harder the slower you play it. So as you build up speed with your right hand, it may actually be easier to switch between those chords like that. So that is the verse section. Then I'm going to grab my pick. I do recommend playing with a pick, but if you're a kind of Spanish guitar player, you don't need a pick to strum the strings. Uh, but I'm a rock guitar player, so I am going to use one. The chord progression is exactly the same, E minor to A minor, but this time I'm playing the full regular E minor open chord, and then you got the G, regular G open chord, although I'm playing it kind of a rock style here too, it's more, more of a G5, then an A major, C, and that's the chord progression is exactly the same. So the strumming pattern, I'm not going to like tell you, you know, it's up, down, 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 or whatever. I think you can figure it out. It's pretty straightforward. Um, but I will talk about two different ways you can kind of do it. Um, up to speed, it's this. <laughs> I think you can figure that out, and I'll play it slow, slower as well so you can hear what's going on. Um, but the two kind of different ways you can do this, one is the way I do it normally, the way I recorded it for sure, which is um, kind of the, the wrong way that they tell you to play rhythm guitar. They tell you to play rhythm guitar, and this is, this is a good skill to have, uh, with a constant up and down motion. So even when you're not strumming the strings, you're still moving your hand up and down at eighth notes or quarter notes or sixteenth notes or whatever the song requires. So that would look something more like this, slowly. <laughs> You can 
see how even when I'm not strumming the strings, I'm not striking them, I'm still moving the hand up and down. I don't actually play it that way. I just play. see I'm not really doing that I am stopping my hand when I'm not strumming doesn't matter you can play it however you want one thing to note is the chord changes will happen on upstrokes uh, no matter which way you do it I think I'm pretty sure so when I hit that A chord A minor for the first time it's gonna be on an upstroke I think this is pretty simple you should be able to figure this out I mean anybody could be watching this you could be a professional or never play guitar in your life but I think it's pretty simple. Now that I actually watched myself do it um, in playing it slowly here in the monitor of the camera, I realized I'm actually kind of combining both of the two uh, approaches that I just described. I don't really think about it. I just do it. And I think that's uh, the best way to go most of the time. But if you're new to rhythm guitar, you definitely want to learn that constant up and down strumming uh, technique because it is invaluable. Okay, so I'm gonna drop the pick again and go back to finger style for the bridge. The chord progression in the bridge is E minor to A7, repeat, uh, instead of A minor. And I'm playing them up here. I'm playing triads on the G, the B, and the E string. So this triad comes from your normal E minor bar chord at the seventh fret. I'm just going to be playing these three notes. So I have my ring finger on the ninth fret of the G string, which is the note E. Middle finger on the eighth fret of the B string, which is G. Index finger on the seventh fret of the high E string, which is the note B. So that's just an E minor triad. And the picking pattern is the same. I'm just going to be thumb, middle, index. Thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index. This time the fingers aren't changing. We're only going to be playing those three strings. So the G, E, and B. So thumb, middle, index, thumb, middle, index. So after that E minor chord, when we go to the A7, all you have to do is put your pinky down on the ninth fret of the high E, and the other two fingers stay exactly where they are, and the picking pattern doesn't change in the right hand. I'm going to put my pinky down. to our G chord just like in the other sections of the song to play the G I'm gonna bar the seventh fret with my index finger on the G and the B strings and leave my middle finger on the eighth fret so we'll have seven eight seven which is D G and B picking patterns the same in the right hand That's your G chord. Then we go to an A7 again, but I'm not going to play it the way I did last time. I'm actually going to change everything, and I'll explain why afterwards. But I'm going to fret the ninth fret of the G with my middle finger, the eighth fret of the B with my index finger, and the ninth fret of the high E with my ring finger. So it's the same A7 chord we played before, but with a different fingering. And the reason that I change it to that is to go to the C chord, all I have to do is lift up my ring finger and fret the 8th fret of the high E. So we'll have middle finger on the ninth fret of the G, and then the index finger barring 
the eighth fret on the B and the high E, which is the notes E, G, and C. So that's your C triad there. And then to play a D, you just move the whole thing up two frets. So we'll be on the 11th fret, 10th fret, 10th fret. All right, and I'll play through that whole thing. Uh, I'll play it at normal speed, then I'll play it slowly. So that's all the rhythm parts in the song. You got the verse, the chorus, and the bridge. There is a lead guitar part too, uh, which I think I also played with my fingers, but you could play with a pick. Kind of a classic Western, you know, that pull-off thing is very common in Western music. A little generic to be honest with you but I think the whole kind of song is we've got seventh fret on the high E pulling off to the fifth fret which is the note A so we got B to A then we'll do the same thing on the fifth fret and the third fret of the B string which are the notes E and D then the fifth fret and the third fret of the high E string uh, A and G then the first fret in the open string on the B. And then pick that C, pull off to the open B string again. So I think that's all the, the parts, all the guitar parts anyway. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. If you're watching this, I'm sure you're liked and subscribed to my other channel, but please like and subscribe to this one as well. Uh, I will be uploading more lessons uh, from the record. Leave a comment if there's anything specific you want to learn. Um, I, I'll probably end up doing most of them, maybe not all of them, but I'm starting with the kind of finger style ones because those are the most fun. Um, so yeah. Thanks for watching.